thank you for, for the invitation to this uh, ENC Academy. I, I'm very happy to participate to this great series of uh, webinars. Uh, and after your nice introduction, I, I have to emphasize that the work I will present today, the work done is in close or uh, almost not possible to, to, to split collaboration with Julia Mosiconacci. Uh, so you're, of course, uh, probably all aware of the importance of the 3D, functional importance of the 3D structure of the genome and of the experiments uh, designed to measure and to observe this 3D organization. Uh, they are known as chromo chromosome conformation capture. And the basic principle of all these techniques are to uh, chemically stabilize physical contacts, then sequence them to identify the pairs of genomic loci in close proximity in the 3D space. I emphasize at once that it is physical contacts. It does not mean necessarily biological interaction. So uh, from this physical contact are usually gathered in a contact map. I see contact map for the genome-wide version. And such a matrix, actually in mathematical terms, is read like uh, mathematical, the mathematical notion of matrix with air at the intersection of the line starting from site I and site J, J the contact frequency between these two genomic loci. And this matrix is symmetric, so you can read equally the contact frequency here or here. What we wanted in the work I'm presenting today is a reconstruction algorithm of the 3D structure of the genome from the data contained in such IC map. We wanted an algorithm that would be fast, that would be model free without any uh, hypothesis about what is a contact or what is a, a biological interaction. We wanted also an algorithm that would be tractable at, uh, for large genome uh, sequences, large genome segments, for instance, wool chromosomes. And we devised an algorithm that I will detail uh, in the following slides based on the notion of contact networks and on the mathematical domain term distance geometry. The basic steps that I will detail is first to pass from the IC map to a contact network, then to the contact network to a distance matrix that is a matrix uh, containing all the distances between any pair of genomic loci, and from this distance met matrix to reconstruct the 3D coordinates of all genomic loci. This algorithm will involve no iterative optimization, so no conver convergence issues, and no polymer simulation, so it is model free. The first step is to pass from the IC map to a contact network. So I will first explain the notion with a binary map with only presence of absence of contact. For instance, here, the red dot correspond to a contact between those two loci. And the translation, the representation in terms of a network is very simple. Each loci, it's each locus correspond to a node, a node of the network and an edge between two nodes will be drawn when there is a contact between those two nodes. So the red dot here in the contact map correspond to this edge in the contact network. The distance then between any two nodes will be the what is called the graph distance or the shortest path distance, that is the number of steps to relate those two nodes. For instance, between the node one and the node 30, there is six steps. The minimal path contains six steps 
So the distance will be six. And such a minimal, such a shorter sparse distance can be computed with the Floyd Warshall, which is a routing algorithm. For real contact map, it's not only presence of absence, it's not only a binary map, but uh, uh, the components uh, are numbers. So they represent contact frequencies. Then the contact network has to be adapted, and we chose to attribute, to, to give each edge a length equal to one over the frequency of contact to some power. So you probably have already encountered such formula. It is currently used to define the distance between node I and node J as a function of their contact frequency. But here it is used only as an intermediary step, as a weight, as the length of the edge. And then the true distance between two genomic loci will, will be the length of the shorter sparse. So taking the same example as before, now it is the sum of the length of the edges relating node 1 and node 30. And you see here that most frequently, the shortest path distance between two nodes is not directly this formula, because the shortest path, the sum of the length of the edges relating these two uh, nodes, is shorter than the direct uh, length of the edge when there is one between the sides. So this is a first remark. The shortest path distance often is smaller is shorter than the direct distance computed by this formula. And the main interest of uh, this definition or, or of this uh, computation of the distance between two genomic loci is that it is a bona fide distance. That is, it satisfies the triangular inequality and above all, there is no problem when the contact frequency vanishes or simply is not reliable, because only the short edges, the corresponding to large frequency, will contribute to the shorter sparse distance. So in this way, we are not only able to compute the distance between any two nodes, but we compute this distance using only components with large, large components, large contact frequency, which are the most reliable. The, this expression involves an exponent al alpha. And for instance, there is a comparison with fish data that gives an exponent of 0.2, but this is only one possibility. I will discuss this point later uh, in this talk. As a side note, we used this definition or this computation of the distance between genomic loci to enhance uh, contact maps. The idea is the following, starting for, from the experimental map, the recorded map, we construct, as explained, the contact network with the, for each edge a length given fr from the value of the contact frequency. We then compute the shortest path distance between any pair of nodes, even those which are not uh, in contact in the experiment, which are not recorded as, as a contact in the experiment. And from this complete set of distances, we could invert the expression, invert the formula, and get an improved contact frequency for any pair of nodes. You see here uh, the validation has been done by Dawn sampling. So here is an original contact map. Here 
by done sampling at 10% or 1% or 0.1% and its reconstruction using this method. The, on the right, you see the, what is represented is the Spearman correlation in red, so for instance here, as a function of the number or the fraction of contacts that are updated according to this formula. And you see that the best results are obtained when all the vanishing contacts are updated and not more. So this gives, on the horizontal axis is the exponent alpha, this gives a way to choose at best the value of the exponent alpha in this formula. And you see a very good correlation uh, between the uh, down sampled map boosted and the original one. So this uh, enhancement algorithm uh, that we have, that is called Boost IC, has been published a few years ago by by the group in bioinformatics. So going coming back to the reconstruction algorithm to get the three D structure of the genome, we are now we have now a complete distance matrix obtained from the original experimental data. Now, we have to infer the 3D coordinates from the knowledge of this distance metric. So this slide is a bit scary. There, is, there will be, it is the only one with some equation. I will try to explain you what is behind such algorithms so that you can, after that, if you wish, you can master this algorithm and use it for your own purposes. The problem of reconstructing 3D coordinates from the knowledge of the from, from the knowledge of a distance matrix is a well-known problem in mathematics. Is it has been solved long ago, more than 40 years ago, in the domain term distance geometry. The idea is the following: from the distances. You build an intermediary matrix, it is termed metric matrix. The formula is a bit complicated, it's not very important. The only point important here is that this metric can be computed from the distance matrix only, from the set of all distances between the genomic loci. For in a mathematical world, for a when there is structure behind, a single structure behind, and that there is, when there is no noise in the experiment and when everything is perfect, this mat matrix has only three non-zero eigenvalues. So I will not explain the notion of eigenvalue. Uh, it's basic linear algebra, and I'm sure that most of you have has already computed eigenvalue of a matrix. And given those, uh, so, so this matrix has only, has only three non-zero eigenvalue, and the corresponding eigenvectors denoted V, I, A, A for the three eigenvalue, and I for all the genomic loci, the three, uh, uh, the, the coordinates are related to the eigenvalue eigenvector and uh, scaled by the eigenvalue. So the coordinate on the direction A, so for instance, uh, one for X, uh, two for Y, and three for Z. So the A component, A coordinate of the loci I will be given by the I component of the eigenvector A scaled by the corresponding eigenvalue. So it is a very simple expression where the 3D coordinates, all the 3D coordinates of all the genomic loci are simply given by the components of the eigenvector and a scaling related to the eigenvalue. In practice, 
uh, it is a bit more complicated because the matrix due to the noise and due to the possible uh, superimposition of several structure in the in the experiment when you are doing IC on population of cell, the matrix are as more than three non-zero eigenvalues. And it has been shown that if you truncate this matrix by keeping only the three first eigenvalue, you get the best approximating structure. So you will simply keep the largest three eigenvalue, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, consider the corresponding eigenvector, which has as many components as you have loci in the genome, and you can compute the 3D coordinate of all the genomic loci simply from the computation of this eigenvector. And then you get the structure up to a rotation, symmetry, and dilation. I will just show you, for instance, what you can get from that. And to continue with some mathematical detail, here is the spectrum, so the set of eigenvalues of the matrix you are considering, the matrix, the metric matrix. And using our distance, we clearly see that there is only three dominant eigenvalues and everything else is near zero. So everything here is noise or coming from the uh, presence of several stru underlying structure. If we use another distance, for instance, directly this distance uh, obtained by inverting the contact frequency, then you have no longer this clear separation between three dominant eigenvalue and the remaining part of the spectrum. And this shows uh, the, the good correlation on synthetic data. This uh, algorithm uh, makes possible a reconstruction at different scales, so either at a fine resolution for a segment of chromosome, or the whole chromosomes, or even the whole genome. So this picture is the one published uh, with the original uh, in the original paper in 2014, and this one is uh, what we are able today uh, to reconstruct using this algorithm with some improvement. In particular, the improvement is the way to truncate the matrix, the way to approximate uh, a 3D structure from the wool uh, distance matrix. And you see you are, it's possible to go uh, for a wool chromosome, here the human chromosome 2, it's possible to go as uh, low as a, or as fine a resolution as 10 KB. This uh, way of reconstructing the 3D uh, stru genome structure uh, makes possible to also annotate uh, the structure directly with any linear annotation of the genome you wish. Uh, so it provides a 3D genome browsers. Here it's, for instance, the AB compartment where we have annotated in yellow the, oh, sorry, uh, the gene rich uh, loci and in, and in red the gene poor heterich uh, loci. And you see a clear spatial segregation in two compartments. It is also possible to annotate the genomic loci with any epigenetic marks, any epigenetic profile. So this makes possible to visualize the epigenetic profiles in 3D. Here, for instance, we have superimposed the acetylation of uh, lysine of uh, histone H3 and the methylation again showing a clear segregation of those two marks, which is somehow expected because one is associated to active 
uh, region and the other one to silent uh, region. This is just an advertisement of the performance of our algorithm because the size it is it, it, it can be used for larger size than the two competitive uh, algorithm uh, Chrome SDE Chrome and back. The time, the computer time is very, very competitive. It is fast. The limiting step is the shortest path, which, which scale as the length of the genome to the power three. And it also accommodates noisy data. We could discuss that later because I see that the time is running. It's mainly the, the important point is that it is model free, purely geometrical. For population data, it provides a consensus structure, whereas for single cell data, it gives a single underlying structure. There is a tenable parameter alpha, so all the already uh, all the contribution to, to the value, to the proper value of this exponent could be used here. There are various implementation of the multidimensional scaling, the, the part where uh, we, read, we, we pass from the distance matrix to only three uh, dimensional structure, and this application to a 3D genome browser. And there is now a tutorial which is available, soon published in Methods in Molecular Biology and already available as a preprint, where each line of the code, either in MATLAB or in Python, is detailed, allowing the reader to change anything he or she wants to adapt the algorithm to, it, to, to uh, personal purposes. I give a few other examples of its use of Shrek 3D as a 3D genome brother. For instance, here is the annotation of the, in 3D of the chromatin colors, where here the genomic loci are annotated with the 15 epigenetic states known as chromatin colors, from the active promoters to the quiescent uh, regions. And you, you see that. On, Again, on the same at the at the scale of the whole chromosome, and uh, so some things that is has been recently uh, discovered: the notion of bivalent chromatin, chromatin where this uh, repressed polycomb mark is uh, at the same time could be at the same time active and inactive, and when this three epigenetic states, active, quiescent, and bivalent, are represented, are visual, visualized in 3D, you clearly see that the bivalent chromat chromatin segregates in between the active compartment and the inactive compartment B in white and active in red, and uh, form an intermediary compartment in between the active and inactive ones. Other possible applications are, of course, single cells. The algorithm is even more uh, rigorous and efficient for single cell IC. I will also advertise uh, two great paper, papers of my co-work, co-author, uh, Giulia Mosiconacci. One uh, using this algorithm uh, in metagenomics to disentangle different species uh, from the shape, the 3D shape of their genomes, where, which uh, segregate in space, or for synthetic chromosomes, which can be visualized using this algorithm. And also a very recent paper by uh, the, the lab of Marcelo Nolman, where this algorithm has been used for single cell at IM. Here, the contacts are uh, not measured, not uh, recorded by the usual, by the previous uh, chromosome conformation capture, but directly imaged jointly with transcription using microscopy. You can also make a nice picture. For instance, this one has been shown in an, ex in an art exhibition. 
And uh, I take this opportunity to, to, to remind that it is only a representation, a reconstruction. It is not a photograph. For instance, with a different setting, you can obtain something like that. So, so it's not at all a photograph of the genome. It's not imaging, it's reconstruction, mathematical reconstruction. And I will end by thanking my uh, collaborators, mainly Giulia Mosiconacci and the two student, students who worked with us at that time, Leopold Caron, which is now uh, at El, in another lab in Paris, and Jean-Baptiste Morlot. The reference of the tutorial, all four references, the original papers, the one focusing on the contact networks, the one for uh, computational enhancement of contact maps, and again, the tutorials. And I thank you for your attention. Um, I, have, I have two questions, Annick. Um, so one is, did you try, so you, you always assume that the distance is one over F alpha, okay, which is somehow related to polymer uh, theory somehow. Did you try other type of metric like, uh, I don't know what I mean. We didn't try. We, we, uh, we play with the value of alpha. Typically, the value of alpha, the, the best value of alpha is when uh, the shortest path distance is shorter than the direct value. I, I will come back to explain that. The best value of alpha is when uh, the shortest path is smaller than the direct value, the direct length of a, or the length of the direct edge, only for component uh, with vanishing or very small or unreliable contact frequency. If everything is updated, if everything is rewired, then uh, you can get artifacts. So we, we, we worked a lot on how to choose the best value for alpha. Also, what is the best multidimensional scaling option to uh, pass from the complete distance matrix to the coordinates. But we kept, we kept this formula for the edge length. Again, it's only for the edge length. It's not the total distance. If uh, using, we can use multidimensional scaling based on these distances for all pairs of nodes, then the results are very poor. So you see, this is the correlation if, if you use only this directly this distance and not the shortest path. So the main improvement has been using this shortest path distance. But basically, using, using this formula is already an improvement of simply considering the number of steps, which, after all, is not so bad. Okay. And my second question is, I mean, since you, you, you test the method on, on synthetic data, I was wondering in terms of uh, what the, the, the reconstructing structures means. So if you, if you basically, I mean, have synthetic data, with structures that are very different, and you merge them in, and, and, and compute the kind of synthetic high C data. When you reconstruct uh, your uh, this the the, the Shrek, uh, structure yeah. from this synthetic data, what did you obtain? I mean, is it so? What consensus means here? Is it just uh, an average? Course, it... Yeah, we did we did the test. We check uh, that uh, considering a single structure and uh, an increasing number. And of course, the quality of the reconstruction decreased with the number of superimposed structure, because then the distance that we uh, infer from the contact network is no longer a cliden, and the truncation is more severe than for an exact structure. Uh, if you start from a single cell structure, of course, there is no truncation except for an experimental noise. And then it is better because there is not this problem of replacing uh, an average of structure by the structure, or, uh, by the structure coming from the average of contact. So there is a, here, 
depending where is the average of costs, you get a, a small difference. And uh, we have tested that for various algorithms, Shrek compared to the, compet to the uh, competitive um, algorithm, and it performs quite well. Bonjour, Annie. Bonjour. Um, actually, I, I, I am not sure I understood exactly what is the output. I mean, I think that understanding the whole method is, is beyond my capacity, mm -hmm. although I try to follow as much as I could. But I would like to understand at least what is the output? What are the images you, you show us? For example, I don't know, could you come back to one mm -hmm. on, of your last slide? For example, the chrome HMMs, um, chromatin states, or, for, or this one, for example. This one, for instance. I mean, are we supposed to see chromosomes here? And what kind of cell? It is uh, the, the, the visualization here has exactly no more and no less information than what is available in the IC map. So the IC map we used here was obtained on a population of cells. So the 3D visualization is the visualization of a consensus structure with all the problems uh, Daniel uh, has uh, alluded. But for example, it is... here, there is plenty of empty space, right? This is, not, this is not significant because this could be uh, changed by tuning the exponent or changing the option. For instance, if you look here, it is the same IC map and with two different options in the projection in uh, deriving the 3D coordinates from the distance matrix, you get different shape. So you but see here, have... it is, is more any... compact. I, is it your question? Yes, but for example, here, you, you, in your legend, you're saying that the, the big red part are active promoter regions. No, no, in, in, the, in this picture, the big red part is the uh, end or, uh, of, of the chromosome. Re, re, uh, green, white, and red uh, label the position along the chromosome. Uh -huh. And there is only here a label for the active promoter region. And you see that they all gather at roughly the same place, whatever the resolution and whatever the option for the, the technical choice in the algorithm. So indeed, the empty space are not significant because you see here far more empty spaces than in this uh, second way of, visualiza of, visuali of, of visualiza visualization. But the main feature, for instance, the fact that the prom active promoters are gathered in one region, one region of the space and not here, for instance, and here it's empty, this feature is robust. What kind of a cell it is? Because in most cells where this has been looked at, in, in real cells with microscopy, for example, it doesn't look like that at all. So I'm trying to understand. I understand it's a reconstruction, not microscopy, but it's a reconstruction that does not aim to reproduce what we would see with microscopy. Exactly. It's not a photograph. That is why the two... Uh, the, the two way of uh, the two analysis are important. This is based on the physical proximity and it gives reliable results about the physical proximity. For instance, here you see that two marks, two epigenetic marks do not overlap. This bubble could be indeed very different or actually in, in a real cell it is moving. So it is not even having a fixed picture is already a, a, yes, a, a huge a artifact. Sorry. So it, it, it makes possible to visualize co-localization or segregation like here. Of course, this part, this red part could be closer to this one or uh, everything could be turned, everything could be uh, a bit change. Uh, reshaped, but the special segregation of uh, the, the, the three different states is something robust. 
and such an algorithm with the different options, for instance, the value of alpha or the option for the multidimensional scaling, makes possible to draw several pictures, several reconstruction from the same data and see what, which feature is indeed robust and which is an artifact of the algorithm. Well, I was wondering, because now you uh, sort of clarified that uh, these pictures were for only one chromosome. Uh, have you tried to do it with more chromosomes and see what... Yeah, we, we did it once for all chromosomes here, but it is uh, it was the beginning of the algorithm, so it's not as uh, uh, beautiful as now. But yes, in principle, uh, there is... a. The size we could process with this right. uh, algorithm is are very large, so you can indeed uh, visualize all chromosomes. Yeah, and maybe this is going to answer a previous question, where maybe it's, it's going to be looking a bit more like what we see uh, in real life. Uh, with Probably, the... even it has been done by uh, Julien Mosiconacci and Romain Kozul for mm -hmm. in metagenomics, where even different several genomes could be visualized and you see the segregation of the different genomes corresponding to different species. So there is no limitation here, on the contrary. When you are um, constructing the shortest path, yeah. and when this shortest path is not the one which is direct, but, but, but the shortest yeah. one would be when, the, yeah. when it, it would be shorter to, to connect through indirectly through several nodes. Yeah, which is often the case. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, what would be the the, the biological uh, meaning of this? Is it possible that there are some areas in the genome that are in physical proximity but somehow not in contact because something is actually some some at the molecular level they are not able to contact although they are very close. Is it something like that? Uh, no, I would rather say it is a bias uh, from the experiment. Uh, imagine you have uh, a, a direct link between this uh, one and 30 uh, nodes. Uh, when the shortest path is smaller than the direct path, the direct length, Typically, it is because the contact frequency is not reliable. It has not been recorded. The pair of segments have not been sequenced enough deeply. So it's rather a way to compensate for the sparseness of the IC map. Mm -hmm. And it is very difficult to have a direct interpret biological interpretation of a contact map because what is recorded in a contact map is only physical contact. Uh, often we say contact or interaction quite indifferently, and we use uh, interaction between this side. No, it's not an interaction. It's simply a physical contact in a certain uh, fraction of cells. Those two sites appear to be close in space. It does not mean that there is a biological reason for them to be close in space. It can be a consequence of neighboring sites to interact biologically, or it can be just by chance. So here we use only this physical proximity to give an idea of the 3D shape of the genome, of this site. Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, my second question is, um, so is it possible as the output of, of your model, instead of the 3D reconstruction, give the 3D density, so the relative density of, of, uh, of, of genome, of, uh, so to say, as a function of the, of the genomic coordinates. So you have for each genomic coordinate, say, a physical density of how dense is that area in the genome? And if so, would it be possible to, to, to correlate this kind of information then with, with the um, epigenetic annotations su such as uh, histone marks and so on? The output of the algorithm, it's not a model. We have no, no modeling here. It's simply translating or yes, you can say that the shortest path instance is a 
is a model or something like that. But the output are 3D coordinates of all the genomic fragments. Here we have used uh, these 3D coordinates as a PDB file and used the molecular visualization software to produce a structure based on those 3D coordinates. But of course, you can do different uh, analysis from these 3D coordinates, for instance, computing a density. Of course, we have not done that, but it would be certainly possible because the output is simply a file with all the 3D coordinates. With that, you can play exactly as you wish. This would be, of course, interesting to, to have a, a, not the structure, but rather a heat map with the density of, uh, or, yes, it, it could be very, very interesting. You could do that because you have the 3D coordinates of all the genome regions. So yes, it would be possible. 